I've been through this this battle to stop this happening and to stop this happening to other people. And there, there are so many more people there uh, who may or may not be a vulnerable student like me and who may or may not navigate it in a, in a safe way if it happens again. Um, and to be clear, he's never apologised to you face to face, even though you've seen him since. No. And he's never sent a text since that complaint was upheld against him. No. So I'd started to get unwell towards the end of my second year, um, mm. and then, uh, and I was discussing this with my program leader of history. And then, when I became single, he. This, this all happened, it all came to a head at the same time and I decided to defer and that's when he started to uh, send me messages and be, uh, ask for sex. I thought that he had been hacked. I didn't really, I wasn't really sure what was going on. Um, and then I, I thought that, I, that it was my fault and that I had asked for it in some way or I had been too friendly and that uh, because I saw a lot of him that I owed it to him. And because he'd helped me a lot as well, I felt like, I felt a bit guilty that, yeah, that it was, it was my fault in some way. There were really overtly sexual ones where he would just describe his fantasies and say what he wanted to do to me and where and um, that were quite crazy and but they they just felt really made up and silly but the ones that got to me more were where he's been watching me and he's telling me about my legs or the skirt I was wearing and things like that. When I had started talking about making a complaint, I think word got round to him because I got a message saying, oh, have I offended you? Um, and that was the last message. So that was at some point, I think it was July um, of last year. When I graduated, I went back to teach and he was still there and that was really hard for me. I was always sort of looking over my shoulder and just I was so anxious about it, especially when I was actually lecturing and in front of the class. Um, and I did, he did, he did walk past me in the learning cafe once and I like freaked out and he just sauntered by as if everything was fine. I felt like they were kind of, I took it all on board and blamed myself. And that, that comment made me think, oh, oh, God, this is just me being a drama queen and asking for it and maybe it's not as bad as I thought because they just didn't react in a way that, that, that they just didn't take it seriously and didn't consider it a serious thing. So I, uh, I was so much looking for reassurance and didn't get it. So I was still doubting myself at this point and wasn't really, I wasn't at the point of thinking, I need to complain about this, this is awful. I was still on that journey of processing towards that. I don't think they dealt with it very well at all. I think it's, this has been a massive learning curve for them. And there were a lot of influences, uh, sort of politics in the department, which meant that when I took it to the dean, she pretended she didn't uh, know what the complaint system was or how it worked and tried to fob it off to someone else. So I had to keep going to lots of people and keep, keep fighting. So there were a lot of delay tactics there. Uh, when I eventually submitted the complaint, it took months and I went through I talked to a series of people who gave offhand comments like the EastEnders comment and each, each time that happened that set me back. The time it took for the complaint to go through was they, there was loads of delay tactics, took a long time. In order for me to take this further I need certain things, uh, I need a certain type of letter and a report back, I need things back from the uni in order to complain about them essentially and they're still delaying on that. So. I think all of those things could have been handled differently. Since then, I just got a letter after Christmas. I had I put the complaint in November, the letter came after Christmas, and it was just a couple of lines saying your complaint has been upheld. And that just wasn't enough. That didn't mean anything to me. They did, I, I couldn't see any consequences. Other people 
are in danger as well. I'm not the only one he messaged, I'm just the only one who happened to get it bad enough with enough evidence and enough strength to, to pursue this. And it, it sets a precedence that this is okay and, and it's not. My advice would be to, to make a complaint as soon as you can um, and because there's such a processing time for you to work out if, it's, if it is really serious. Um, but I would make the complaint sooner because you're gonna, there are so many uh, pitfalls to that processing where you go and seek for help and people put you, put you down and you, you doubt. Skip all of that, just make the complaint and then let, let them decide. Um, uh, so you be strong and trust your guts and, uh, and go for it. well-meaning people, staff members, students, friends fall into without realising and I think there's a lot of fear around challenging colleagues and fear about what that will do to the department and to, to um, people's careers if, if they challenge that person who, who may have power over them.